Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Miami. Uh, uh, South Beach, bringing the heat. Uh, this the type of town I can spend a few days in Miami, the city that keeps the roof blazing. Okay, let's talk ACC football. We'll begin with the Coastal Division, then we'll talk about Miami. You know the quarterback, Ja'Cory Harris, who reminds me of a box of chocolates because you never know what you're going to get. He can help you by throwing for touchdown passes or by running the ball, or he can hurt you by completing barely over half of his passes and throwing a ton of interceptions. In fact, last year, the U led all of college football with number of interceptions thrown, a pretty dubious category if you ask me. The Hurricanes at least will be loaded in the backfield, and that's good news because Al Golden's a new head coach, takes over for the fired Randy Shannon. They're going to be changing to a pro-style offense, which will be more running back friendly. Lamar Miller is one of several running backs who will be a factor for Miami, but again, I've got some doubts about the quarterback play. If Harris can't get the job done, then maybe their backup quarterback, Stephen Morris, who saw playing time, can. Now, you look at the schedule at the bottom of the screen, this is why I can't pick Miami to finish any higher than third in the Coastals. Maybe one of the toughest schedules in college football, the road games, it's going to be too much to ask for Miami to go 9-3 and three or better with that schedule. It's just too many landmines on the road. The defense will at least be good, though. Shane Spence does return at linebacker for Miami. Again, I don't have Miami finishing any higher than third in the Coastal. I do have North Carolina, though, finishing second. Last season, remember they had those players suspended before the LSU season opener? Considering that, considering that they had a lot of bodies they couldn't use, 8-5 and five is not a bad season at all for Butch Davis' team. They'll again be tough on defense, especially on the defensive line where they should be even better. Quentin Copies returns at defensive end. Defensive tackle, a lot of beef there, 350 pounds worth from Tydreek Powell. Powell and Carter expect to be playing in the NFL soon. And linebacker Kevin Reddick is an adequate player as well. Offensively, though, question marks there, especially at quarterback, losing T.J. Yates. Bryn Renner now becomes a signal caller for UNC. Three offensive linemen do return, but they need help in the backfield. You can tell by the schedule, they need momentum early because the second half will be tough for the Heels. I got them finishing runner-up. Fourth place, I have Virginia. Two years ago, they were a joke, especially offensively. Last season, even though they finished 4-8, and eight, they improved by 1,600 yards on total offense. So that's coaching right there by Mike London. They'll be floating again with the bowl game because, again, the offense is getting better. But defensively, liabilities there, especially against the run. Last season, the Cavaliers gave up a little over 200 yards per game on the ground. And this year, to make matters worse, the Cavaliers have to play a lot of the tough teams in the ACC. So 5-7 is possible for Virginia. I'll be surprised, though, if they can make it 6-6 six and six or better to get to a bowl game. Georgia Tech, I have finishing fifth and not going to a bowl game. Too many skilled players lost from that triple option threat in 2010. The offense actually took a step back last season from 9 They lose Josh Nesbitt, the quarterback. Tevin Washington did see action near the end of the season because Nesbitt got hurt. So at least there was a little experience there. And I thought defensively last year they were a disappointment as well. Expect about 80% of that Georgia Tech offense to be run. So if they can't find adequate running in the backfield, it's going to be a long year for the Yellow Jackets. Other than uh, missing Florida State, it's, it's going to be a very difficult slate in, for Georgia Tech in the uh, ACC, as you can tell by the schedule at the bottom. i got them finishing second to last. Well, Duke. They no question are at the bottom of the uh, Coastal Division food chain. If this were basketball, lacrosse, or academic bowl, they'd kick your butt. But it's football where they get their butt kicked. The quarterback's pretty good, though. Uh, Sean Rimfrey last season threw for over 3,000 yards. So, so at least you have experience there. And at least the wide receivers are good as well. But defensively... Oh my gosh, they were just flat out awful a year ago. I don't know who's worse on defense, them or Wake Forest. It's probably a coin flip as far as who has futility as far as defenses in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Um, Duke has a shot at winning a couple of games early in the season, but once they get into ACC play, they have no chance. Virginia Tech's my pick to win the Coastal Division, even though Tyrod Taylor's not coming back at quarterback and Ryan Williams has gone too. Look for the running back that will replace him, David Wilson, have a good year. 5.5 yards of carry last season, scored 11 touchdowns, was used as a receiver and as a running back. He's a versatile player. Logan Thomas will be 
the man that will have the most pressure because he has to replace Todd Ryan Taylor. At least he's six feet, six inches tall. He'll be throwing to very talented receivers. He's five inches taller than Taylor, so naturally he'll have a better view at throwing to some a pretty talented receiving core. And all but one of the offensive linemen return for Vatek. They'll still be good offensively, and they'll still be good defensively because they have six of their 11 players back, including linebacker Bruce Taylor. The schedule, probably the easiest amongst the national championship contenders. You can tell at the bottom of the screen. Their toughest road game is at Georgia Tech, and I've already told you about um, how insecure I am as far as them being competitive. So for Bot Tech, no reason why they shouldn't go 11-1, possibly 12-0, got them playing in the ACC championship game. Florida State Seminoles all the way back. Well, if they beat Oklahoma on September 17th, the answer is Y-E-S. The reason is because they returned almost everybody, and they would have proven that they know how to get revenge on the team. Remember, the Sooners beat them by 30 points the season before. Schedule, you can see there, they don't play anybody really tough in conference, and the games that they have against decent teams of the ACC are at home. No North Carolina and no Vautech on the regular season slate. E.J. Manuel will be the guy that will be under the microscope. He replaces Christian Ponder. Ground game's loaded uh, with Chris Johnson back. And on defense, they should be much improved. Big question is, against Oklahoma, and when they play Virginia Tech in the ACC Championship, which I feel they will, how will the defense do? Last year in big games, all but one, Florida State's uh, defense was pathetic. So... We'll see if the team is finally used to Mark Stoops' defensive schemes. And they do return Brandon Jenkins, their fine defensive end, as well as uh, Greg Reed at, uh, at a defensive back. But the schedule very favorable. No reason why Florida State shouldn't win the Atlantic Division without breaking a sweat. They should win it going undefeated in conference play. Biggest question is, can they beat OU? I got OU winning a close one there, so I think the national championship might have to hold another year for Jimbo Fisher's team. The big battle will be for number two between North Carolina State, Maryland, and Clemson. North Carolina State has the easiest schedule amongst those three teams that I mentioned, but they do have to replace the quarterback in Mike Glennon, whom, just like the new Botech quarterback, is six feet six inches tall. NC State returns eight offensive and six defensive players, so there's enough experience there. We'll see how North Carolina State does with a schedule that's not as tough as some of the other contenders in the ACC. Maryland does have to deal with a tough schedule, and we're about to show that to you in a second, but let's talk about their head coach, Randy Etzel, who did great things at Connecticut, got them to a BCS game, and assured the Big East crown. Danny O'Brien's the most talented quarterback in the ACC. He returns, and a good running back in Davin Megan. Seven of their top ten tacklers are back, including defensive back Kenny Tate, but the schedule... It's not as easy as North Carolina State. That's why I have the Wolfpack with that number two finish in Maryland at number three. Clemson last year was disappointing. The Tigers went six and seven. Enter a new offensive coordinator, Chad Morris, to maybe get that offense going. A quarterback who's hardly even played at all, Taj Boyd, will now be the signal caller for Clemson. Um, defensively, they'll be good. Andre Branch um, will be one of several starters back for the Tigers, but you have to replace Daquan Bowers, a very uh, good defensive player. He's gone. The schedule will be the toughest of any of the teams um, contending in the Atlantic Division. You can see right there, hardly any mercy at all for the Tigers. Boston College, not very good on offense. That's easy to say. Um, they'll have a new offensive coordinator in Kevin Rogers to maybe get that team going in the right direction. Uh, Montel Harris, a very good running back, could be all ACC this year. We'll see. Um, he returns for the Eagles, but there are some uh, uncertainties at quarterback and at wideout. Defensively, Luke uh, Keekley, one of the best, if not the best, linebacker in all of college football. He returns. BC last year wasn't bad on defense, at least not against the run. They have to get better, though, against the pass. Boston College has to get off to a good start because you can tell by the schedule. Um, five of their last seven games were on the road, including... All those games being against bowl teams from 2010. Ouch. And then Wake Forest, as we mentioned earlier, just like Duke, um, too many defensive liabilities. Uh, they gave up well over 30 points a game in 2010. The offense, I think, has promised with Tanner Price at QB. And they have a, a very fast running back in Josh Harris. He ran a 4-3-40 reportedly. And um, wide out, they're not too bad either. But they've got to replace some players up front. Defensively, as I mentioned, they're bad. In fact, they're Secondary gave up 29 touchdowns a year ago. That won't cut the mustard. So Wake Forest, 
I'd be surprised if they finish any higher than the seller in the Atlantic Division. My pick to win the ACC, it's going to be Florida State. They'll get revenge on Virginia Tech. Florida State just too talented, especially on the offensive side. The Seminoles I've got going 12-1 and if you count the ACC Championship game, and I got them going back to a BCS game for the first time in a long time. We'll talk Big East football on my next show. So long for now. <laughs>